Okay, uh, so I'm going to talk on, after having a conversation with someone, talk on guilt, you know, like, for example, reading something in the Bible, not to go to false readings or other places for spiritual information, and feeling guilt, and also um, the fear of being, um, having human, uh, human, um, human temptation, shall we say, maybe the seven deadly sins or the four defects of character from 12 steps, and, and the feeling that God knows everything and, uh, and uh, you, know, how, you know, how can one be sort of uh, perfect or, or whatever it is, or escape the, the judgment or the knowingness of God. So what I would say, I mean, my own personal view is, um, I really like what Hawkins said, and, and he sort of said, you can actually go line through line through the Bible and even calibrate different parts of the book and find out if they've been altered uh, from the original. And, uh, and so uh, he gave the example, I mean, a lot of the New Testament calibrates extremely high, but you can actually calibrate it line by line to see if anything's changed. Like uh, you find that with muscle testing in the, um, uh, in, in the uh, Aramaic version of the Bible, Jesus doesn't say, God, why have you abandoned me? And that tests with muscle testing to be true. And with muscle testing, where it has Jesus saying, um, uh, God, why have you abandoned me? The muscle testing comes out that that is, um, that is false. So, um, so, you know, for me, it's like, you know, I think there's the potential with the Bible that some of it may have been changed. Uh, and also, I think with Jesus and the times and the teachings of the time, the teachings coming out of that and the writing of the Bible, I mean, Jesus, I would say, was the only uh, avatar savior in, you know, at that time, probably at that time in the whole world. And in the context of being the, the life, the way, and the truth, uh, in, in speaking to his audience, that was probably, I, I would say that was true, or probably true, at least for his continent, um, that he was the way, the truth, and the life, the highest, uh, the, you know, the, the message to God and to the eternal truth within. So it was correct for him, uh, even if, for example, Buddha was on the other continent, it wouldn't be appropriate to say, uh, and, and, or you have to go down uh, to the other country, to the locals. So that was the right message to give. So I think certain things can be read in the Bible out of context to the times in which they were said and in which the teachings came forth. And of course, take into account that things may have changed i.e. the Council of Nicaea, various changes, various influences to change the text over the years. So I really like Culkin's work in the muscle testing and the work he does. Uh, and I think, um, yes, you know, and the Hawkins says Jesus was a savior and of the highest, uh, the highest level, but also Buddha and Krishna were also very, very high leveled teachers. Uh, sort of from the East uh, uh, and in different contexts and different time zones. It's very rare for someone to be at such a high level as Jesus was. I think Hawkins has calibrated about three in all of humanity. So he was in a way, the way, the truth and the, li truth and the life. And probably in that, in that area, if you, there's probably a lot of cults, a lot of poor teachings and bad teachings and, and all kinds of things going on. So it would have been actually probably appropriate to say, look, don't go into other areas and get misled down the wrong road. You know, just stick to stick to the Bible or whatever. That could have been appropriate uh, to the context of the times. But, I, you know, we're not really hearing what Jesus would say today or if Jesus was, was aware that, of Buddha's teachings or Krishna's teachings. So I think there is that thing. Uh, the guilt, for me, guilt, if you have guilt, I mean... Um, for me, guilt is just not useful. It's, it's, um, there are spiritual principles, which I'd say is, is important to live by. If you break those spiritual principles, there are consequences, I would say. It's not a punishment, but there are consequences. Like if someone says, like, don't put your hand in the fire, it's not like you be, I, otherwise, if you put your hand in the fire, I'll punish you. Uh, so it's not like a parent, when, when a parent says to a child, don't put your hand in the fire, make sure you don't put the hand in the fire because uh, you're breaking a life principle if you just stick your hand in the fire. It's not like the parent punishes them as soon as the kid puts the hand in the fire, but 
but it's just a, a, spirit, a principle of this existence that hands in the fire hurt. And so spiritual principles when you, when you break them. But, you know, I think in 12 steps, we do need to maintain a certain level of spirituality because uh, if we lose enough of our uh, uh, spiritual vibration, uh, it can lead to um, you know, the addiction restarting. But as long as the addiction is starting, it's just about making spiritual progress. Um, holding guilt, uh, guilt uh, in my view is not useful. It's just to process that out and not hold it. Because if you hold guilt or, um, or try and see, like guilt, I would say is just um, a form of like, no, God, God will be happy if I, if I stay guilty and punish myself. I think that's a false idea from the collective consciousness, which has been carried through humanity. I mean, God will be happy if I'm happy, joyous, and free, and carry that message of how I became happy, joyous, and free. And then it's making spiritual progress. But I do actually, you know, for me, the, the universe is aware of everything and, and every motive. But it's not necessarily, you know, the, the universe is forgiving and merciful. And, and hence, we have things like 12 steps and various teachers, which help us to go to higher vibrations uh, and, and, and let go of things which, which don't serve us. Um, so I would say, uh, yeah, so in, in my view, I mean, muscle testing, but um, I mean, if you see addicts, you know, they have to live by certain principles. Uh, for, if they're in a low vibration, they have to adhere to those principles, otherwise they can, um, they can act out. Anyway, um, in terms of things like lust coming up or various other temptations, lust, anger, fear, uh, greed, you know, uh, uh, greed, gluttony, um, you know, I would, say, you know, I really like what Hawkins said and, and, and the teachers from the East, like the karmic bank account. I actually wrote a chapter on that, the karmic bank account in my, in my book. I'll plug my book, Bulletproof Peace. Um, so I'm not so worried as much as I used to be about doing the wrong thing. Like if say, um, there's a, if there was a room and I'm actually 12 years absent by God's grace, but if there was a room and there was a plate of donuts and people just walked out of the room for a second and I scoffed two donuts. And so there wasn't enough for everyone to come back for a plate of donuts. You know, that would be in a way a violation of spiritual principles. But I do, uh, you know, I think the 12 steps has a way of making, I could make amends, I could bring an extra donut back next week. Or if I did do that and take an extra donut, I shouldn't have been a bit, a bit naughty. Or um, if I uh, could say that these 12, but I, I really like what uh, the Eastern religions say about bad karma and good karma. If I do enough good deeds, they can easily, and often deeds of love far outweigh, can outweigh and undo many deeds of um, selfishness, so we say. So they give me mechanisms. Okay, I did steal a donut, an extra donut, but you know, the 12 steps uh, and the karmic religions, bank accounts is like, okay, I, I took a sandwich from a poor person when they weren't looking, but I can today go out and give some sandwiches to some poor people who are hungry. And that would kind of like, so there are mechanisms for just letting go of being human uh, and, and devoting oneself to a spiritual pathway, whatever that is.